All right, our final story for the day is about Cornell West. I had to print out his letter, <laughs> by the way. Um and I and I'm still gonna have a hard time reading it, not because I'm I'm bad at reading out loud. I'll, I I will let, let me let me preface this whole section with this. I have an insecurity about reading out loud, um, because when I I'm I'm a I'm a bad reader. Period. Like I it it, it it it's it's harder for me to like read through some stuff sometimes. Uh, it, like that's why I'm, it's harder for me to read through books because I keep going back and reading over some things and trying to like okay how does this phrase what's going on, you know. Uh, but when I was in, in middle school, I used to get made fun of a lot because I, I was I wasn't particularly a strong reader, but I also like was slow. I was a, I'm, I'm a slow reader. I know that about myself, too. Uh, so sometimes like. I, I my, my mind will start wandering a little bit and then my eyes will start wandering a little bit and I'll skip a couple words and then I'll be like, wait, this doesn't make sense. And I would have to go back and read it. So like. You know, teachers and classmates used to make fun of me for it. So, th so this is like part of an insecurity that I have that I just need to fucking get over. Um, but I had to print out the letter because I downloaded it from Twitter. But the image is small. And when I zoom in, it gets super fuzzy. Uh, so I just was like, fuck it. I'll print it out. I'll go old school. I'll go I'll go brick and mortar on this song, bitch. And uh, and I'll, uh, I'll 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 read this. I'll read this bad boy out loud. So it was it was all over Twitter. It's also in on radindymedia.com. Uh if you go 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 check them out for your uh for your independent news uh sources. I lost the word I, I had in my head. Okay. Uh but that's that's where that's where I first saw it today was Rad Indie Media, and then I saw it on Twitter. And a bunch of people were talking about it. Uh so let's get into this letter. And, and let's kind of just break down what happened, because the reason why he left is, as you can see in the little title card here, is he left Harvard over their views on Palestine. So this is, this is from June 30th. Uh, and, and it starts. He's such a fucking polite dude. Right. It, it starts with, I hope and pray you and your family are well. This summer is a scorcher. You ain't lying there, Dr. West. You are not lying there. It is a hot fucking summer. It was a hot summer last year, but I, I feel like this summer is way hotter. Scorcher, good word. That's that's the word to describe the summertime. Especially this summertime. It's not just hot, it's a scorcher. Here's my brief and candid letter of resignation. So here we go. Uh, how sad it is to see our beloved Harvard Divinity School in such decline and decay. What a fucking start to the letter, right? Holy shit. Such decline and decay. Damn, dude. This man knows how to write a fucking letter. The disarray of a scattered curriculum, the disenchantment of talented yet differential faculty, and the disorientation of pr uh, precious student loom students loom large. Now, we were in a pandemic year. I, I, I admit to that. But I have family and friends in academia, and I will say that even before the, the pandemic, um, they were having a hard time with uh, administration. You know, as he points out, scattered cur curriculums, you know, the, the talented yet differential faculty. Yeah, when, when the administration comes down on you for, for how you're teaching and what you're teaching, and says you can't talk about certain topics, certain subjects, and that happens long enough, you get beaten down. I had a professor when I was in college. His name was George Founds. He was fucking phenomenal and really was one of the people that taught me how to think critically. Uh, okay, that that's the key there, is he taught me how to think critically. And as an 18 to 22-year-old, I mean, you th th that's the time to really fucking develop those skills. Asking the right questions, how to problem solve properly, how to be creative about your problem solving, how to use the creative process in various aspects of your life. The design department didn't particularly care for his method of teaching and his hands-on projects. Um, and they were intensive projects. There was, there was a lot to consider in what he was giving us. Um, but again, that's part of the creative process. It's part of critical thinking, right? 
And they were trying to oust him. You know, they would kind of shit on him, do these, oh, we can't really approve this. Why don't you just teach him how to use the software? You know, and software is one thing when it comes to graphic design. I, I'm, I won't deny that. But really, it's the way you think. It's the way you solve the problem. Um, a creative solution to the problem is is really what differentiates you, especially in a creative field. But by the end of it, he was just burnt out. We were the last class he taught. And there were times where I could tell George was just exhausted from dealing with the bureaucracy at the school. Um, dealing with, the, you know, the upper level academics that didn't really give a shit about any of this stuff. About sharing his knowledge with this next generation. They just wanted him to hit the curriculum. Let's go. Do this. Do this. Do this. But he was teaching us how to think. That's far more important than something on a curriculum. Anyway, going on with the letter. When I arrived four years ago with a salary less than what I received 15 years earlier with no tenure status after being a university professor at Harvard and Princeton, I hoped and prayed I could still end my career with some semblance of intellectual intes intensity and personal respect. How wrong I was. Damn, dude. Like, he fucking hits hard with these. With a few glorious and glaring excep exceptions, the shadow of Jim Crow cast in its new glittering form of exp uh, new glittering form expressed in the language of superficial diversity. All my courses were subsumed under Afro-American religious studies, including those on existentialism, American democracy, and the conduct of life. No possible summer salary along alongside the lowest increase possible every year. Yet, I delivered two convocation addresses and one commencement speech in four years. I was promised a year sabbatical, but could only take one semester in practice. And to witness a faculty enthusiastically support a candidate for tenure, then timidly defer to rejection based on Harvard's administration's hostility to the Palestinian cause was disgusting. So he supported Palestinians and they rejected him. They wouldn't offer him the tenure. We all knew the mend mendacious reasons. That Fred, Fred, if you're still watching, that's that's a big that's a big dollar word right there. Mendacious. We all knew the mendacious reasons given had nothing to do with academic standards. When my committee recommended a 10-year review, also rejected by the Harvard administration, I knew my academic achievements and student teaching meant far less than their potential, uh, their political pre pre prejudices. Even my good friends in the Afro-American and African Studies Department were paralyzed given to their close relationship with the, to the administration. And after teaching extra courses, including five courses in one year, this silence continued. When the announcement of the death of my beloved mother appeared in the regular newsletter, I, re I received two public replies just as uh, of that my colleague, Dr. Uh, Jacqueline Olga Cook Rivers, who received none when her blessed mother died. Which is just shitty. You know, like when you have a death in the family and you don't hear anything from any of your people, like super fucking shitty. Even if you didn't, you know, even if I don't know that person very well, I, I'll, I'll at least say I'm sorry for your loss because I am. It fucking sucks losing somebody. If you've lost anybody in your life, you know what that pain feels like. And just to say, Man, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Is it does a lot. Lost my place. Okay. Any ordinary announcements about a lecture, award, or professional advancement re receives about 20 replies. This kind of narcissistic academic professionalism, cowardly deference to the, an uh, to the anti Palestinian prejudices of the Harvard administration, and indifference to my mother's death constitute an intellectual 
and spiritual bankruptcy to uh, of deep debts depths fuck man uh in my case a serious commit commitment to veritas requires resignation with precious memories but absolutely no regrets that's a fucking i mean he slammed them hard you you got two fucking replies one of your colleagues got none and everybody stays silent because you got you you got rejected from tenure because you support the Palestinian struggle, who are living under apartheid, who are living under a military theocratic uh, uh, oppressive regime right now, and that's what it is. This again, I, I mean, I, I I released a video earlier this week for, uh, and I and I hope some folks will go check it out uh, about how the Israel lobby controls narratives, especially in academia, in, in, in the collegiate level. They go after college students, but they also, I mean, they're, they're going after professors. They say that Harvard didn't say a, a goddamn thing. My God, how fucking petty does a university need to be? That you can't send a, I'm so sorry you're going through this because you lost your mother. And I, I, I doubt that Cornell West will watch this, but, you know, Dr. West, I'm so sorry you had to go through a, a, a tragedy like that. I can't, I can't even fucking imagine the pain of losing your mother. And the administration can't even say that because he supports Palestinians. That should show you how deep and insidious the fucking Israel lobby is. That should show you how the, the root of problems in academia. I, I, I don't know what Cornell West is going to do next. Um, I'm excited to see what happens next. I think he is an important voice uh, of our generation. Um, you know, I, I disagreed with him on, on, on electoral politics, um, and I probably will continue to disagree with him on electoral politics. Uh, but that's okay, because you know what? It, uh, Cornell West is one of those people that, res that you can have a respectful disagreement with. Administrative members of, of, of Harvard, the Israel lobby, members of the Israel lobby, you can't have a respectful disagreement with. Because they'll block you out. They'll silence you. They'll try to push you out. And you're left with no other recourse except to resign. Again, his views on Palestine... Does that make him an effective professor or not? I would wager to bet that it makes him a better professor because it shows that he, he has humanity in his heart. That he understands what this conflict is about. Understands where pain and trauma come from and possibly how to alleviate that. And isn't that what the next generation needs to learn? the cause and effects of trauma and how to prevent it and how to reduce that, how to reduce pain in the world, that makes him a far more effective fucking teacher than someone that recites fucking uh, intelligence community talking points or what the Israel lobby wants them to say. Who fucking cares what a bunch of moneyed assholes have to say? I don't because they don't have any beliefs. They have a they have a, a bank account. That's it. Cornell West has beliefs that he's stuck by. And and because he's stuck by his beliefs, he was punished by have by being forced to resign. That is unfair. And that shows you how deeply, deeply fucking rot rotted this system is.
Let's look at your comments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fred says temps were so high by me. Uh, my lettuce bolted at the end of May. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, Holly points out teaching critical thinking is education. Uh, uh, agreed. Agreed. I, I think that should be the core tenant of any sort of education. Uh, Brother West is so articulate. He, I, I, I honestly think like he is, there's so much, there, there is anger behind what he's saying in his letter, but it's so beautifully fucking written. You're just like, who cares? I don't, I don't care how angry you are. This is fucking, this is poetry is what you, your resignation letter is poetry, sir, is what it is. Um, Aram asks, how much deeper than bankruptcy can intellect be? <laughs> Edit that shit down, brother West. Yeah, it should. I honestly, if this was me, I would have just, I, it would have just been like, here's my, here's my candid and short resignation letter. Eat a dick. Goodbye. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he, wait, wait, it's just so beautiful, you know? Holly points out we have the same respectful disagreement with Brother West. Yes, I I um I was disappointed to see him uh, you know putting put, putting support behind Biden, knowing full well what Biden was. Um, but the way he articulated his point, I was like, I understand where you're coming from, but I but I disagree with with the with, with the actions you're taking. Uh, I, I think your actions and and your reasoning don't line up, in my opinion. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think that's how you, that that's okay. You're, you should be able to respectfully disagree with, uh, with people that you risk, that you, uh, respect and the people that you, uh, whose opinions you value. You shouldn't just be a yes man all the time. If you are, then, you know, like you you, you don't have beliefs that you have formed yourself. You're, you're just parroting other people's beliefs and, or at least that's the way I see it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, you know, but to, to to wrap this segment up, I I hope that uh, Doctor West, it, it, the next chapter of his life, is uh, one where he can find uh, solace in his intellect, where where people won't judge him or ostracize him for who he is, because nobody and regardless of age, gender, race, creed, color, nobody should go through that. Nobody should go through that kind of ostracization. Uh, ostracization. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. 
thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.